Welcome into the Thunder Basketball Universe. If you can believe it, you are currently watching episode one of season six. Season six? Season six. <laughs> Where has the time gone? We are so happy to be doing this podcast with you today because it means that the official start of the season is right around the corner. And you can always tell. There's always yeah. a little tell in the early parts of the season, the preseason, when you know you're getting close to that, that training camp time. And it's when Sam Presti gives his preseason press conference, which is what we were at earlier today. We're recording this podcast on Wednesday afternoon. It's September 25th. Earlier today, we were up at the practice facility getting a chance to talk to Sam Presti. Yeah, Sam always talks a week before training camp begins, and that's obviously slated to start next week with media day. Yep. And we're really not far away from the first preseason game on October 7th. So Th Sam kind of sets the table for the Thunder season. He always references that this is a chance for him to kind of speak directly to the fans. Yeah. And so um, we'll let you hear his entire opening statement here in just a little bit. But wanted to touch on a few kind of key points and get you up to date on some things that have happened here in the Thunder basketball universe over the last few months. Yeah, before we let you hear from Sam, there are a couple of things that we need to touch on because we haven't talked in a little yeah. bit. So we got some catching up to do. And um, first things first, a little bit of news out of the Thunder practice facility. And it's about Kenrich Williams, who underwent a very successful arthroscopic debridement in his right knee. And that was last week. He's going to miss the preseason stretch here those five games during preseason he'll be reevaluated after that yeah and that's kind of how the thunder always does it they give a reevaluation mm -hmm. timetable as opposed to a return to play or return to form performance timetable so um just keep an eye out for more news on kenrich yeah. uh, obviously such a great guy and um, amazing person within the thunders locker room and so you know really hoping all the best for him and yeah. that he's able to make the type of recovery that he needs to make from that procedure and yeah. move forward. So that's kind of a, the only big piece of maybe health and injury news yeah. that we have at this point. But Thunder players are back in market. We've sure. seen them out at community events, Isaiah Hartenstein, Chet Holmgren, mm -hmm. many others out and about in the community um, who have been, you know, doing what the Thunder does best, which is just have a great relationship with this town of Oklahoma City. You know, this is always such a fun time of year because we haven't seen these guys in a yeah. long time after a whole season where we see them every single day, essentially. Yeah. And so you go a couple of months without seeing them. And then all of a sudden, you know, I'm hosting an event at the YMCA yeah. and in comes Case and Wallace and Dylan Jones. And I'm like, oh my goodness, it's like back to school all over again. How's it going? Good to see you guys. Yeah. And I can only imagine what that energy is like when all of those guys get back into the building, get back into the weight room on to the floor after being apart the entire summer. That was such a fun event and Paris did an amazing job oh, emceeing that. And, uh, you know, we the guys have just been so active. I, I was up in Tulsa yeah. with J-Dub um, at an event as well. So uh, just really cool to see, you know, these guys with a little bit more time on their hands, yes. have a chance to really like let loose and fully immerse themselves in some of these things that is what Oklahomans you know, love to do and mm -hmm. um, what these guys are all about, which is giving back. I think J-Dub was pretty excited to see you yeah. too. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, interviews yeah. are back. <laughs> <laughs> it's about that it time again. <laughs> yeah, it was good. It was good to see him. It was good to catch up. And, you know, there was uh, that it felt like no time had passed. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it was good. That yeah. speaks to just how close this team is. Yeah. Super, super fun to be around. And there's a lot to look forward to. A couple of things just to get excited about Media Day. It's on Monday. Right. It is almost here. And as we all know, that is the official kickoff to training camp. And so a lot of interviews, a lot of content gathered during that media day. And then, of course, we'll come back with a podcast recapping all of that and getting you all set for training camp. Yeah, so be on the lookout early next week following yeah. media day on Monday. And then the Thunder's going to be rolling into practices pretty much every day uh, that week. And then the following week, we've got preseason games. In fact, three games in four nights, which is yeah. pretty rare for an NBA preseason schedule. But will definitely simulate what the Thunder has exactly. coming up this year. I think 15 back-to-backs on yep. the season. So um, ha having that recognition that, hey, this is what we're going to be seeing mm -hmm. in the regular season, a nice tune-up for this team. I love that the Thunder doesn't shy away from those things because yeah. they're like, look, this is the adversity we're going to be able to, mm -hmm. we're going to need to be able to handle during the regular season. Yeah. Why would we shy away from it during the preseason? Let's use this opportunity to actually, you know, get ourselves primed and ready for that. So I, I really appreciate that. I, I like that about the Thunder. All right, before we dive into this opening statement from Sam Presti's media availability today, 
A couple of things just to add some context. And the, the first one here, he's going to make several references to an op-ed that he wrote. Mm -hmm. And for the OG Thunder fans, the ones who have been around for a while, you know exactly what op-ed he's talking about. He wrote it in the Oklahoman back in 2019. It's called Looking Back, Thinking Forward. And so if you haven't read it, if you don't know exactly what he's talking about, I highly recommend that you read that. It's a really good read, honestly. Yeah. And it's kind of like the North Star in terms of what this organization is laying as a foundation for what they want moving forward. Um, and it's a really, really good read. And it helps you understand a little bit more context about what he's talking about in this opening statement. Yeah, he wrote this in the time period after he had traded for Shea Gilles Alexander mm -hmm. and all of those draft picks, one of which ended up being Jalen Williams, J-Dub, right. and was sort of on the precipice of trading for Chris Paul, trading away Russell right. Westbrook, who had obviously been such a you know cornerstone to the organization for a long time. And it was really laying out a vision of what the next iteration, the next era of Thunder basketball would look like. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't necessarily looking at the clock or, you know, projecting an amount of time in which all of these things would unfold, but really more setting a vision of what it would need to look like yeah. in order for the Thunder to make its next, mm -hmm. you know, arrival, so to speak, in the NBA playoffs and, and meaningful basketball. Mm -hmm. And so that's really kind of the goal that is set out by Sam here in this preseason press conference for season 17 is to earn that arrival. You know, the yeah. Thunder made an appearance in the postseason last year. This is a chance in what he calls chapter 17 yeah. of the, the organization's history to make that arrival. It may or may not happen. And the point that he wanted to make with that chapter 17 thing is like each season is in and of itself its own chapter. Right. And there's nothing preordained about it. The Thunder, just because of what may be said externally or written about externally, it is not entitled to anything. It's not on third base already here right. at the beginning of the season. Uh, this is an opportunity for the Thunder to write this chapter itself. And it's got to do that with its own ink. And it's got to do that diligently every day. Entitled to nothing, yeah. but earning everything. That's the Thunder's M.O every single time that this group gets together and every single season as well. One last thing before we let you listen to Sam, we're going to put the link to his full media availability in the description box below. So if you want to listen to the whole thing, which I would recommend because there's some really yes. good nuggets in there. And he obviously just takes the time to answer any and all questions that anyone might have. So some really good stuff in there. Click the link. Some great stuff from Sam during his media availability. And with that, here's Sam Presti's opening statement. Just want to kind of begin by thinking back to the op-ed that uh, I wrote a few years ago. Um, and in that, I talked a lot about just the totality of seasons that we had had to that point in Oklahoma City. And over the last 16 years, one of the things that I think we've come to learn is that every season in the history of the Thunder is a chapter in and of itself. And it's how it lines up in the catalog of total seasons is really for history to kind of determine after that season's over. So what we have this year is really the opportunity to write the 17th chapter. And we're really excited about doing that. As we've gone through this period of time since we've been here, um, we've tried to build a team or teams of our own design that are built on the values and the principles of our community and the things that we really believe in as an organization that we want to represent. Um, each step of the way, expectations have followed us, sometimes really high, sometimes pretty low, most of the time pretty high. Uh, those external expectations are things that we have seen internally or we internalize as possibilities. We see those external expectations as possibilities. Um, the difference is that, you know, external expectations are things that some people think should happen and possibilities are things that we feel could happen, but we have a lot of respect for how hard it is for those things to take place. We don't think we're entitled to start on third base. We never have, and we don't expect anything to be handed over to us in any way. Um, <clears throat> that's why we've always focused on being pace setters versus clock watchers. We haven't really got too involved with the external conversations. We've really just kind of focused on the things we can do with the season that we have. And then we'll see where that all fits into the history of the team, you know, down the road. Um, the principles are the same from when we began to reposition 
replenish and rebuild the team in 2008 and then again uh, around 2021. The thing that we've <clears throat> also learned is that when we've made those pivots, um, the team has been extremely young and those teams to our benefit have maintained their youth over a long period of time because they started so young. As far as this season goes, um, I think the longer I do this, I realize that if we're doing it well, we begin the season essentially staring at a blank canvas and basically starting over with a beginner's mindset. No rigid rules, not tied to certain assumptions, uh, willing to be open and curious about whatever it is the team's going to signal to us over the course of time. And the focus has always been on learning and growing through the experiences that the team is able to cobble together, good or bad. And I think that served us quite well over the course of time. This year, we have two significant additions. I think everybody knows with <coughs> Isaiah Hardenstein and Caruso. <coughs> um, and I think our experience with Chet last year is informative for us because we didn't take Chet into the season and try to wedge him into the team that existed before him. And we kind of broke things down and allowed ourselves to kind of, like I said earlier, stay open to whatever the signals were and to learn the trade-offs of each one of those decisions. Um, I think that's a healthy way to look at it for us. And I think it's something that we'll need to, we'll need to adopt uh, or repeat in this case. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, one other thing I think that's important that we've learned is that it's in any process, it's more important to know what is going to slow you down than what's going to speed you up. And through that kind of exploration, I think we've learned a lot of those things. We're going to need some time with this particular group, especially because we're not trying to uh, wedge those guys in or have assumptions about how they're going to fit with certain players. We, we kind of have to allow that to take its, take its course. And as a result, I think our continuity will not be great early. But if you look at continuity in the NBA, continuity generally shows up or lack thereof early in the year. I don't think it will be a big issue for us once we get into the year, we get some, some miles underneath us. The more you, you play together, the more you rep together, the more you learn. And we'll just need to kind of get some of that moving in order for us to get the kind of continuity that we'd like to have with this particular team. Um, we've always seen the regular season as an opportunity to discover the team. I think anybody that's been here uh, or covered the team for a long period of time understand what we mean when we say that. I do think as people, we generally all want to get ahead with what we already know. I don't think you can do that in the NBA. Uh, I think especially with 82 games, I, uh, one of my favorite authors, Robert Caro, has a great saying about research where he says, you have to turn every single page. And I really like that relative to what it is that we have to do in order to discover the team. We have to really understand and go through every iteration to ensure that we're not shutting off potential pathways that could really help us or get us to another level, whether it's now or in the future. Um, and that's really helped us find competitive advantages in the past, whether it's lineup constructions, um, end of game situations, um, player development pathways, uh, player combinations, um, schematics, thematics. I think by turning every page, you give yourself every opportunity. Um, I think we're also getting to the point in time as a team where there's some things in the regular season that have to be worked through and others that have to be worked around, where there's certain things that we're going to have to confront, even if that means not getting the, the, the immediate benefits or the numbers might not look particularly good. But ultimately, we're going to have to get good at addressing these particular situations, issues, um, whatever it might be, we could work around it. We could scheme around it, but ultimately I think that makes you more fragile and it makes you more breakable when you're ultimately going to be in situations where you're going to have to confront these things as a team. And I think that happens for you as you become better. 
And so there'll be some situations where we have to lose a battle to win the war, so to speak. And I think that's that's a healthy place to be for us and getting to that point. Um, I think you've heard me talk about how do we continue to expand the potential of the team or the possibilities of the team. I've always felt and still feel that a lot of that has to do with just our play style. I think it's built to scale. I think it's really good for that. Um, a lot of those things come back to um, less patterns, more rhythm. We've talked about that in the past. I think when the team is in sync and the team is on time, we're much harder to play against like any team. But that takes a lot of work and great intention and great patience to try to capture that because it's really elusive. Um, but when the team is in rhythm uh, and we're playing instinctively, it makes us a much harder team to guard. Like I said, it also takes the degree of difficulty for our best players and makes it much lesser. It also allows us, uh, allows our role players to have better opportunities su at success. And I think the hardest thing in the NBA is to get everyone on the floor playing well at the same time. And that's like the holy grail for everybody. You may capture it, like I said, but it doesn't stay with you very long. Um, and that's always what we're looking to try to do. Um, I think the other thing for us is, and we've done a great job of this to this point, is just trying to avoid your turn, my turn play. Um, because that's like a, you can default to that so easily with talented players, but I think ultimately that will cap, you know, kind of cap the team, it makes us easier to play against. Um, and again, that's not something I think we've struggled with, but you have to be able to resist that, uh, especially early in, in games and early in the regular season. Um, if you've been around the NBA, you know that every season has ebbs and flows to it. Um, We've talked about, you know, every team gets thunderstormed on, rained on three or four times a year where it seems like the sky is falling. Um, and when it's not on you, it's on five other teams. Um, that's never going to change. We know that when that happens, externally, people will lose their minds. Um, that is part of the world we live in. We have to exist within that. It's not changing. It's perfectly fine. Um, We've said before, social media is a sport, but scrolling is a lifestyle. And that is something that everybody has to understand as we do what we do. You can get off the train at any point you want. <laughs> um, we're all still on it for some reason, um, but it's because we love it. Um, another way of looking at the ebbs and flows is that it's really optimistically, the way I look at it is it's really growth and repair of a team. Every time the team is growing, it's breaking something that it's, it's existing as, and it could make it harder. But then after we get better from that, you have to kind of move on from there. That's what I was talking about, working, working through things versus trying to kind of finagle your way around them. And I think if we see it as growth and repair, I think you can take some of those lessons and throw them into the future. But <clears throat> Sometimes there'll be some plateaus and some regressions, and those are the times I think we can be at our best because even in that ecosystem that we all exist, I think the team has done an excellent job of focusing on internal standards and not external conversations. And I think it's remarkable for a young group of, of players to, to have that mindset. And I think we have to work hard to try to continue to, to, to protect that as we go forward. Uh, last thing on the season and the length of it, I think the depth of teams in the league, I think depth in general is really important. I think depth uh, relative to um, the parity in the league that we see now is, direct, is directly linked because the teams are so deep. Um, <clears throat> but I also think it's important for these reasons. Um, you know, midway through the season last year, there was a change in the points of emphasis relative to the officiating. So we saw a much more physical game. We like that, we're for that. We're certainly not um, uh, against that in any way. We think, it, we think it's probably better to have a balanced game, but you're still introducing a level of physicality uh, into the game every single night that's gonna wear anybody down. Couple that with the fact that the second half of the season, is more compressed with less days off and more games or travel days than we've seen in 10 to 12 years. 
Um, and you're gonna see just the attrition of the league probably change a little bit more, but to get a better product, which is totally understandable. But I think depth matters there. The icing on the cake for all of that relative to the depth is the pace of the modern game is much different. So the days are the same. There's still 24 hours in the day. Um, there was always physical basketball, but the amount of torque on the bodies and the way in which the, and how many possessions there are within a modern NBA game is just a different load. That's why I think the depth is important to all teams, not just to our team. And I think we're well positioned for that. And, um, if we're turning every page, as we talked about, we'll find some things out of that as well if we stay curious about it. Um, I'd just like to hit the op-ed one more time here. Um, I think when we talk about uh, that period of time, I was really trying to explain like a series of seasons and sometimes people get lost, you know, they forget a lot of the seasons because generally as people, myself included, we think about the beginning or we think of the end. And a lot of times we lose sight of the value of the middle of a journey. Um, and what we all know is that the middle is always the longest part of anything that you're doing. And at some point we're going to hit the middle. You know, I don't, I don't know that we're there yet. And the way I would define the middle is when your best laid plans, your, your visions and aspirations don't unfold sequentially in, in A, B, C, D, E, F, you know, they don't go in order for you. Now that's, for most of us, that's reality. Um, but when you hit that period of time, generally that's where the novelty wears off, um, regression happens, plateaus happen. Uh, there could be some bad luck or some good luck that comes in there. Um, and I think a lot of times that's where people tend to abandon their principles or their practices and they kind of lose their way a little bit because the middle really is the longest part. And at some point we'll confront that. Um, but I think when we do, hopefully some of the lessons we're learning now will be able to stabilize us, guide us and help us maintain our position in order to work through that. I think that's just something that's important because that's the type of organization that we want to all be a part of in this building. All the people that I work with, that I have the benefit of learning from, I think we all wanna be a part of something that can endure over a period of time. And that's what we're focused on. Um, so just in closing to our fans, um, and then we'll get to everyone's questions. There's no silver platters in Oklahoma. I've said that before, there's no silver platters in Oklahoma. Um, but I would say anything is possible. It just can't be expected and shouldn't be expected to be handed over or to be easy. We as an organization and as a team have to earn our arrival. And we have one season to try to do that with because that's all we have in front of us. That's the opportunity we have. We've got an extremely young, energetic, ambitious team that's constantly striving and they're inspiring people to be around. I, they inspire me. Um, and what we're trying to do is be the exception to an age old rule in pro sports, which is you cannot win at the highest level with young teams. We recognize that in order to be exceptional, in order to be that team, you have to be willing to be an exception. And for us, that means staying curious, staying open, knowing, you know, you, you can't find it if you're not looking and turning every page. That is really for us um, really important, irrespective of the external conversation or expectation to be able to protect ourselves and maintain that, that mentality that has served us so well. Um, we don't know how chapter 17 is going to be remembered within the final catalog of uh, of Thunder history, and we don't expect to know that. We don't know how the season's going to unfold. We don't expect to know that either. Um, all we have is the present, and we have the possibility of establishing ourselves in making our arrival in the Western Conference, which is what we've set out to try to be able to do over time. And all we really know how to do here is to use those opportunities and just press on. 
just keep pressing on. Um, you know, come regression or progression, we have to press on. And I think we have the type of mentality with our players and our building that are up for that challenge. Always such great insight from Sam Presti. I mean, obviously, we don't get a chance to talk to him a ton throughout the season. So anytime we get a chance to hear directly from him, especially at the outset of the season, just so much great information that we can hold on to. And I feel like sometimes throughout the course of the season, if you know fans you know ask me questions or are wondering why certain things are happening or curious about what's yeah. ahead, you can kind of always refer back to these press conferences. I mean, Sam really... He's pretty upfront and honest. He's laying out yeah. what he thinks is going to be important, the factors that he thinks are going to matter to the team. And he's pretty transparent about maybe what some of the challenges for the team are going to be. I mean, I remember in years past, he's talked about sort of those uh, silent forces in mm -hmm. the NBA. And those are the things that the Thunder was able to actually hurdle over and, yeah. and you know, power through to get to the place that they got to over the last couple seasons. So really valuable stuff. And uh, definitely, if you made it to this point in the podcast, <laughs> you have really downloaded a lot of important information for yourself for the season. And if you want even more, don't forget the link to his entire press conference, which runs for about an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. Great stuff. Totally worth listening to. It, that link is going to be in the descri description box below. And don't forget, Media Day. It is right around yeah. the corner. Oh, I always get so excited for this part of the season. That's going to be on Monday. And that first preseason game, Gallo, October 7th. At San Antonio should be an awesome kickoff to the preseason slate. And yeah. then, um, as we mentioned, that starts a stretch of three games and four nights. So first home preseason game will be two nights later on the 9th mm -hmm. against the Houston Rockets here in OKC. Right here inside this building, Paycom Center. Then we go up to Tulsa, which yeah. is always a fun game we get excited for. We're going to take on the New Zealand Breakers. Yeah. Welcome in a little international team into Oklahoma City. But we are so excited to get this going. And we're so excited that it's season yeah. six. Six. Oh my gosh. Welcome to the show, folks. We are so excited. A lot to look forward to this season. But until next time, thunder up and catch you later.